You're listening to Screen View with Peter Van, Amy Morgan, and John Denny. Fan us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or join in on the conversation on Google+. Welcome to Screen View episode 16. I have with me John Denny. Hello. And I am your host, Peter Van. Uh, tonight we will be talking about uh, series finales. Uh, Chuck left us this last week, so we'll talk about which ones we hated, which ones we loved, and which ones we have decided not to watch for 10 years ago. Uh, but before that, we will talk about uh, movies. And Top the 10. Top 10. Uh, number one, The Grey at 19 million. 19 sort of a low million. take. Yeah, pretty low. Uh, Underworld Awakening at number two. <laughs> the Catherine Heigl crap show at uh, number three. I mean, it just seems overall, looking at the, the top ten, not a lot of people went to the movies this past week. Yeah, yeah. I, I went. I actually went to the movies to see Sherlock Holmes. Oh, really? Yeah. But, I mean, overall, it's just, but, you know, the number one movie makes $19 million, Yeah. And then, you know, low. it sort of drops kind of way down from there. Yeah. Number five only made eight million. So, you know, they're waiting for something big to come out. I don't know what, what it is that they're waiting for. I don't know. We will uh we'll get to the new releases and we'll see how that goes. Um Man on a Ledge was very low take at eight million dollars, despite the fact that there was just like blitzing everywhere for them. And, yeah. Uh, extremely loud and incredibly close at six, contraband at seven, the descendants at eight, which is like it went up 170% since it got nominated. Speaking of, the number three was one for the money. Um, the advertising, I haven't seen anything advertised for that movie at all. Have you? I saw it like once or twice. I mean, maybe I'm just watching different channels or, you know. It, it was definitely but, not highly, uh, highly, pro- it, was, it wasn't strongly promoted. You'd think that since Catherine Heigl was executive producer on that, she would make an effort to try to make her money back. You know what I mean? I don't know. I guess there are people. I guess their understanding is that Catherine Heigl just draws people into the box office, so they're like, yeah. "Oh, Catherine Heigl, I'll go see that." I guess. Who is the guy that is in the movie with her? Do you I know? Have no idea. Oh, okay. Is it, I, I don't think it matters, but uh, I'm just curious. That's all. Um, let's see here. What's his name? What's this guy's name? I don't know. Oh, Dan- Oh, Daniel Sunyata and Jason O'Mara. Oh. Daniel Sunyata is from uh, Rescue Me. That's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Franco. Yeah, and then Jason O'Mara is from <clears throat> Terra Nova and that show Life on Mars on ABC, like a couple years back. Um, oh, yeah. So let's... Yeah, the Descendants. It made 170. Uh, it made 170 percent more than it did last week uh, by adding 1,441 theaters, which is pretty impressive. It still only made less than 60 million dollars, though. I mean, yeah. that's good for that for a sm- small release into a larger release. Yeah, it was but, a very limited release. Yeah. But um, you know. You think more people want to see these movies? It'll build up. I mean, you know, the Oscars just came, so it'll definitely build up for sure. Yeah. Um, and it's only at two thousand theaters right now. And if uh, the Catherine Heigl movie can make twenty seven hundred theaters, the Descendants can make. It. Uh, Beauty and the Beast in three D and Haywire round out the top ten. Um, new releases this week is uh, ooh, Big Miracle, which is that Drew Barrymore <sighs> Drew Barrymore film about. Uh, uh, Whales. Whales trapped under ice. I'm so sick of the advertising for this movie. <laughs> and so sick of it. Having fun in water with her face open. Yeah. Uh, Chronicle, which is a about three high school students who find out they have powers. And then this one kid goes crazy. It actually looks um, not that bad. I'm actually, actually yeah. sort of interested in this movie. The more, the more commercials that I see for it, the more I kind of want to see it. Yeah. Um, I did not want to see it at all when I first saw a commercial for it because I thought it was like another one of those found footage movies that we talked yeah. about a couple weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, wow, everyone ends up dead except yeah. for that one kid because he gets away somehow. Right, but because he's crazy. 
right just in time to murder some other people but i don't i don't think that it's that i haven't really done too much research on it but i think it's like an actual you know beginning middle end yeah i think it actually has a plot and everything like that so yeah um you know the commercials make it look good so i'll, I'll go see that well, i won't go see it probably but i'll watch it eventually <laughs> Uh, and then the last one, the last big one to come out this weekend is The Woman in Black, which is... I know you're looking forward to this. I had a chance to go see a screener for this, and I was afraid that I would pee my pants because it's so scary. The one that they advertised on TV? Hmm? They, they, they had a commercial where they showed a bunch of people in, like, um, night vision watching this movie. No, is it? Were they like freaking out? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh god! Yeah. Thank goodness I, I didn't wanna, see it then. I definitely want to see this. Oh my god! I I, I totally wussed out on that. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna. Do that. <laughs> um, all right. So turning to some quick news, really quickly. Uh, Hello, let me just say real quick. Um, not a good turn for Daniel Radcliffe to go from probably the the biggest money maker in movies ever to um horror movies. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you can't fault the guy for trying something new. Yeah, I know. You think it would stay out of the out of the limelight for a little bit, and then you know, come back with something big, but go right into a horror movie. It's like you know, you're already at the end of your career. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's getting some. Um, I think it's getting some pretty good early buzz. Yeah, um, I mean, it looks like a like a pretty good movie. Yeah, Obviously, uh, he's not going to win any kind of Oscars or anything. No, no, but he's you know he's trying <clears> something new. Yeah. Um, so despite the fact that uh, 3D sales have dropped uh, pretty nicely, uh, the company Real 3D, which you actually are probably familiar with since they most of the glasses that you get in 3D films are Real 3D glasses, uh, they still made 2.8 million in net income, uh, with 16.8 million loss uh, from last year. Uh, they did a lot of cost cutting as well because they knew that they were going to lose money this year. That you know the uh, films were going to drop in terms of three D pricing. Um, so they how they did they make some, money? They they did some cost cutting and uh, yeah. But if they they provide the glasses, is that yeah. what I, I get? They don't have anything to do with the actual movie though. Uh no they they I believe they come with the they they also do the projection projections and stuff like they 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 come out with the uh the the, the projectors and stuff like that as well. Okay, so if if people if less people have gone to see three D movies, mm -hmm. thereby less people using the products that they provide, how do they make money? They they cost cutting. Okay. I mean, I'm not a. Yes. Yeah, so, not a big, so I don't. I don't really understand how that works. Uh, so the company Real D uh, does. They use. Um, let's see what kind of. Let's see what they. Do. Yeah, they do video projectors, and then they have the glasses that can read those that projector. Um, okay. Specifically, they, they, they did a lot of aggressive cost cutting, so they, they shaved down on their budget in terms of uh, like overhead costs. So they were able to do whatever they were able to grab from 3D, they, they used it towards their profit. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Can I just point out that this guy's quote says that their fiscal year 2013 starts on March 24th of 2012? Yeah, that happens pretty often. How are nine of your months. <laughs> <laughs> in next year's fiscal year. Yeah, they do that pretty often. Um, it's kind of <laughs> sad. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's just funny really to me. Bizarre, like, yeah. I get... The, I used to work for a company where the fiscal year ended on June 30th. Mm -hmm. That's six, you know. That way it envelopes two, two halves of the year. Yeah. yeah. But, I don't know. That yeah. just seems so funny to me. It's pretty insane. Um... So I, I feel like, uh, John, I don't remember this last year, but um, a lot of the companies right now are talking, like, they're releasing their Super Bowl ads ahead uh, of the show. Yeah. I remember a little bit last year. Um, I don't think anyone paid attention to it too much. Because mm -hmm. it kind of, like, if you're, if you're me, I guess, and you're watching not rooting for a team, one way or the other, mm -hmm. or even 
much for the sport. Um, you kind of don't want to want to ruin the effect of the Super Bowl commercials, right? You're going to see by watching them ahead of time, because then, like, think about it. Once it gets towards the end of the game and they start re- replaying the commercials over and over again, you're like, "Oh, I saw that one already." <laughs> you're going to go into the game saying, "I've seen this one already." You know what right, I mean? Right. It's so stupid. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't really understand this, and they were talking about, you know, it's the normal and stuff like that. So they're gonna, they're trying to generate some buzz online, and um, you know, people will be like, "Oh, I saw this commercial. This commercial is so funny. I'm gonna keep watching it," and blah blah blah. But I feel like it's such a. I mean, they spent so much money on uh, the Super Bowl commercials. You know, like the Super Bowl commercials are an all-time high in terms of price. Of course, they go up every year. Yeah, they go up every year. And uh, last, this, um, I believe. Um, Here's what ends up happening: is that the ones you see online, mm-hmm. they're gonna people. They want you to say, "Oh, that was that good. I can't wait to see what they're not showing us." And then inevitably, you're like, "Everything I saw ahead of time was better than this." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, here's here's what they're not going to show you is, like, uh, the ones that haven't shown anything is, is you know, of course, Sable, which is uh, Budweiser. Um, which is known Doritos. Doritos. Which is uh, known for doing some pretty good commercials. And Doritos is actually coming back and doing what they did a couple years ago, which is have, like, you know, the fans to submit their own videos and stuff like that. Right, right, right. So those... Uh, those are pretty fun. Um, but uh, so some of them that have come out, they've already released in full, uh, include uh, trailers, which include uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation. Which right. Actually, if you haven't seen it yet, we'll link it to the show notes. Um, it's, it's actually really good. <laughs> I know. It's uh, I'm actually at, I'm first, excited. at first I saw the first G.I. Joe trailer, Retaliation trailer, and I said, it's not that good. And then I saw it again, and I was like, wow, this is actually really good. This is actually pretty good. And then I saw this one, and I was like, wow, this is this is really good. Especially now that they gave Cobra Commander a helmet instead of a gas mask. <laughs> um, Matthew Broderick playing Matthew Broderick as Bueller, I guess. As Ferris Bueller? It's, yes. It's kind of weird. Like, he's... Sort of Ferris Bueller, but sort of like he. They're making fun of Ferris Bueller. Yeah, and then he. By it being Ma- Matthew Broderick's day off. Yeah, and then he. Let's be honest, Matthew Broderick's had a day off since Godzilla 2000. <laughs> what has he done? Birdcage? No, that wasn't him. Uh, the producers. <laughs> that, that was, was in him. the 90s. That was him. Oh, the producers. That's right. I forgot about but that. But most of the time, he's just he's just sitting pretty and collecting unemployment from Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. Uh, but he's hawking the Honda CRV, which is really sad because that is an ugly car. I can't believe they still make that car. Can, have you seen the new one, the one that they're advertising? It's it, oh my god, it's an ugly. It's I'll ugly. see it this weekend when I go to the car show. Oh, so ugly. Uh, and then also a couple other ones that they've shown uh, is that Volkswagen, you know, follow up. They've done you know Volkswagen last year, of course, was. The Darth Vader kid? The big one. Yeah, the Darth Vader one. So this year they're coming out with a couple more, like a follow-up to it. Yeah. Uh, the dog strikes back instead of the kid. So the dog is like chasing the Volkswagen and the Beetle and stuff like that. Um, and then a couple that they've teased include uh, the Avengers trailer, which um, Josh Whedon has. Actually, this is a follow-up to what we were talking about last week. Josh Whedon has said no to Spider-Man showing up in the Avengers. Doesn't make any sense, right? Exactly. What, what so pretty much what you were saying, like he's just saying no, it's not gonna. It's like plus, if I was gonna put somebody in there, I wouldn't put Spider-Man because he's so mainstream. There's really no people, you know, it wouldn't really matter. Right. The movie's gonna be big enough on its own. It's not like they're putting him in there so people are like, Spider-Man's in it. Let's go check it out. Like, like reading comics, you see on the shelves, it's like you know, uh, uh. A character whose books aren't selling that well, and they'll make they'll shove in a Spider-Man appearance in his book, and they'll put it on the cover, mm-hmm. and they're like to boost sales. Yeah. Obviously, the Avengers is going to do well enough, where they don't need to shoehorn yeah. a character that already makes enough money. Yeah, they've got enough star power in there. They don't yeah. need a brand new Spider-Man to really boost any sales. Or anything. 
Um, the Dictator, which is uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's new movie, which um, seems like it's an actual movie and not just like, oh, we're going to do this fake documentary or whatever. So Right. Um, well, he doesn't have any more characters left. Right, right. From his TV show, so. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? I don't he, know. Um, he had three characters from his TV show, the Allergy Show, mm-hmm. and he did three movies based on them. The one was an actual movie, though. Um, and the other two were like those fake documentaries. Right, right. Okay. Um, apparently, Seinfeld is back to hawk another Honda product, the Acura NSX. <sighs> Seinfeld used to hawk Honda products before? No, no, no. Uh, Honda, you know, they got Matthew Broderick to do the CRV. And oh, 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 I see. To do the NSX, which just came out. Um, Jerry Seinfeld and the Soup Nazi are back to talk about the NSX. Um,. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, after that, let's. Uh, a couple trailers came out. Hunger Games trailer two. I did see that today. It's good. It looks good. I'm reading the books. Have you Have you read all of them yet? I'm on the second one on right second now. One. Okay, I stopped after the first one because I was reading other books and I haven't gotten around to it. And um, and uh, Carly, my girlfriend, finished all three books in a week. Yeah, Steph finished. All three books in a week too, and she was like, "You have to read them," and I was like, "All right, I guess." And yeah. I don't know; they're easy to read, but I wish I don't know. the The first one doesn't end. You it just kind of stops. One, right? Yeah, it just kind of stops. Yeah, they want you to read the second one. I mean, obviously. Right. It just kind of ends. And she was like, yeah. Uh, but when I was looking up the Hunger Games trailers today on IMDb, I already saw, okay, so there's only three Hunger Games books. Yeah. They have a slated title, Hunger Games 4. Huh? Yeah. How for 2015, I think. I don't know. I did a search on IMDb for Hunger Games. Well, IMDb may, I mean, IMDb is not known for its, uh, Future good future projections. You know? No, I know, but I mean, goof around. And... They don't readily put stuff out there, right. you know, just for the for the hell of it. You know what I mean? Sometimes they do, but uh, it turns out that um, they are going. It's a lot to of work split... to What's that? It's a lot of work to put up a a a page for a movie based on a book that doesn't exist. Well, apparently, they're going to split the three books into four movies. Ugh. Enough with that. Um, enough with that. But, but, I mean, there's not enough in these books. There's, it's like a 350-page book each, and they read. I mean, I mean, they're, okay, even though they we're, we're and people. And the stories go in such a way that, it's, you know, according to the second one, if the third one is anything like it, you can't really split the story up anywhere. There's yeah. nowhere to stop it. Yeah, and and the books are, you know, they're 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 rather smaller books. They're not like the Twilight books, which are like you know several, you know, 500 pages or whatever. Each hunger, each book in the Hunger Games trilogy is only like 350, 400 pages, and they read quickly. They're very fast books. Um, so I don't know how they're gonna do it. Nobody really knows how they're gonna do it. Obviously, because the first one isn't even out yet. Um. It's kind of stupid that they're going to do this, but, you know, studios just want more money. Yeah. That's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much all we can say about that. Um, let's see. Another trailer that came out is a Lockout. We were actually talking about that uh, several weeks back, which is a uh, Guy, Guy Pierce. Yeah, Guy Pierce movie uh, directed by Luke Besson. So that, that looks very Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll link to that in the show notes. And then... One of the two Snow White films that are coming out this year. So Snow White and the <laughs> Huntsman will be out. Which is weird because uh, in Once Upon a Time, I don't know if you watched that show, John. Uh, Once Upon a Time. I've seen it here and there. Uh, there's a one episode that specifically speaks about Snow White and the Huntsman. One episode. And they conclude it the entire... Uh, they conclude that storyline in one episode. So a two-hour movie... <laughs> We'll focus pretty much on the the things that occur in that one movie. Well, they have to one episode. They have to grit it up. Yeah, they yeah they definitely do. I mean, uh, Chris Hemsworth is the Huntsman. So. <laughs> of course, he is. And uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kristen Stewart, right? Kristen Stewart from uh, Twilight will be 
Snow White and uh, Charlize Theron will be the, the queen. So interesting. Uh, enough, enough of this fairy tale <laughs> stuff. It's, I mean, they exactly, did. Yeah, it's definitely year of the fairy tale. They did Red Riding Hood. And did that, that do as well as they had predicted it would? No, absolutely not. It was, um, it was, it was very. It, it didn't make that much money, and it was poorly received. What's that creepy movie with uh, Sleeping Beauty? Um, I don't know. Oh, what the hell is it called? Um, the girl from Sucker Punch is in it. I don't know. Um, basically, it's Sleeping Beauty, and they take they get to like a bunch of girls, take these drugs and make them go to sleep, and then they like are leered at by creepy old guys, I guess. It's like a very that's weird, right. very weird movie. It came out in it came out oh, in December. Oh yeah, actually. that's right. It came out recently and it just yeah. kind of faded away. It I, was I actually, don't remember if it was in a wide release or not. It was actually called. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't remember that. Uh, the, I remember like a like commercial here and there, but I don't remember seeing it listed in any. I I went to the you know I went to the theaters this past weekend. And I don't remember seeing yeah. it listed in any of the other any of the theaters. So. I, think it kind I don't of just... remember ever being in a wide release anywhere. Yeah, I probably did. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. How much more gritty can these fairy tales get? I mean, if you just tell the original story that the way the way the, the Grimm brothers wrote it, yeah. that's that's probably enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they're, pre- they're pretty gruesome as they stand, and then they were dumbed down for the ho- for the um, Disney audiences. Yeah. And now they have to regrit them up. I don't know. It just seems so stupid. Um. Yeah. So, Sleeping Beauty only made thirty six thousand dollars. Thirty six thousand dollars. Yeah, and it was in release <laughs> for twenty eight days, and its widest release was only four theaters. This is uh, according to Box Office Mojo. So, fun times. It it was a very very limited release for sure. That's amazing. Um, this is of course you know there's Sleeping Beauty, there's Snow White and the Huntsman, and then of course in March I believe there is a movie with Julia Roberts called Mirror Mirror, which also focuses on the same story. It's insane. It's just like out of this world. Like what's with all these fairy tales that focus on Snow White specifically? It's just weird. It's getting. Yeah. Just, I'm kind of losing it. <laughs> Um, but, alright, so now that we've gone through the trailers and, um, gone through some punishing ones, we will, uh, talk about our topic for the week, which is, uh, as, as you may or may not know, uh, the television series Chuck finally made its end, uh, sayonara end state this past week. Finally died its slow death. It finally completed its death. It was flopping around on the ground for a little bit, taking its final breath here and there, and then it finally took a last gasp. And, uh, John, you saw it. So before I decide to talk about it, what did you think about the end of Chuck? Um, I have two thoughts about it. It it was, on the one hand, it was rushed, where... They could have had a, a more full story to tell, mm-hmm. I feel like, but they they had to end it because you know they only they were cutting their episodes, um, and they were you know kind of squeezed together with the time that they had to get them out. Um, so I feel like they could have told a more complete story. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how much I'm ruining by talking about it. Um, no, but, go for it. You can catch it on Hulu.com for free. Obviously, in the past week, Sarah had lost her memories of Chuck. And, um, you know, towards the end of it, they kind of make it like, uh, you know, it's a happy ending. Everyone lives happily ever after. But I think one of the things they really ignored was the fact that um, Morgan had lost his memories a little bit and then never became the same person again. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't remember liking Star Wars. Yeah, but he kind of got that back because he found out that, you know, he used to like it. So then he reacquired his enjoyment of Star Wars. Later. Yeah, but it, I mean, he was, that, that's the same as 
liking Star Wars when he was a kid. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. So that like that wasn't that wasn't complete. That wasn't finished in my mind. And then they never actually said if Sarah got her memories back or even if she, you know, fell back in love with Chuck at the end. You you kind of you kind of hope that she did like the way it ended, you know. Right. Kinda so that's the one way. The other way is I feel like they they finished it I don't know how to word this. Way after they should have this season, they had a really good segment of stories where everything was leading up to a big bad guy and it turned out to be um Ah, uh, Superman. What the hell's his name? Brandon Ruth, yeah. Shaw. Brandon Ruth, Daniel yeah. Dana Shaw, yeah. Dana Shaw. And when that ended, Steph turned to me and said, that should have been the last episode. It, it should have been. It really should have been. It was a really good episode, and there was no like weird open-endedness that they had to worry about. The yeah. story was done. Everything was finished. There was yeah. no more intersect anywhere. And that was it. Yeah, there's um, a, Yeah. So I feel like they could have dra- dragged out that um, Shaw storyline a little bit further and made that the finale instead of, you know, they between that episode and the final episode, they had two, two more people get the intersect, yeah, right? It, yeah. um, and then uh, they introduced a new character who had never existed before. It's out of the blue. It's just boom, yeah, one day, so, boom, he just came out, yeah. You know, if they hadn't ended it there, they should have dragged it out or, you know, not worried about adding in new new characters and, you know, yeah, I, done all the stuff that they had done. Yeah. I, I feel like, like, I really liked Chuck in the beginning. And uh, I kind of gave up on it last season because it just felt like it wasn't going anywhere. But then I rewatched last season and it's... In its uh, in its entirety, all twenty two episodes, back, back to, back. to back, and it and it worked out really well. It was much the pacing was much better, obviously, because you were watching it back to back. And it's I um, feel like that's why I not to interrupt you, but I feel like that's why I stuck with it mm-hmm. longer than you decided to because while I was watching it, I watched it from my DVR, so I just record stuff, and after like you know six episodes, mm-hmm. me and me and Steph would you know, watch them all together. Right. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so the pleasure... My enjoyment of it was different than, than your enjoyment of it because of that factor. Right. So the pleasure of DVRs and such. Um, yeah. Uh, I feel like they they ran out of ideas this past year, and even though they had a full 13 episodes to flush everything out, they just kind of had so many ideas but at the same time not enough ideas and then they just kind of started cramming stuff in like the Shaw thing was I felt was like lackluster because it felt like um, what's his name Decker right Decker is that the guy from the last episodes Uh, oh no no Decker yeah yeah like he was you know pursuing Chuck and you didn't know why and then it came out that he was literally just being blackmailed Right, he was working for someone. He was like, "Oh, okay, great." And then they didn't even like. But I feel like even that was if they had dragged that out a little bit more, it would have made more sense. You know what I mean? Like in the first season, the the enemy was Fulcrum, and in the second season, you find out that Fulcrum was working for the Ring. Right. And then the Volkov thing. Yeah. So yeah, season like, yeah, like two and three was the Ring, or like was um, and then it was. Volkov, and then now it was Volkov, yeah. back to Shaw, and it was. Just, I feel like they could have flushed that out a little bit more because it was just like, oh yeah, so Gertrude blows him up, and then Daniel Shaw appears, and then it's like, oh okay, this is right. And his reason for doing it was, oh, you broke my heart because you killed my wife. Right, which was his motivation years ago. Yeah, and it was just like, that's it. You're gonna come back with that. Like I understand they tried to wrap him up, but he was in prison. I would have been fine if he didn't come back. Yeah. And then But they, at least yeah. at least there was an enemy that we knew. Yeah. And then the whole like, you know And he was like in my mind not you know, I keep interrupting no, you, but he okay. was on part my whole idea not the idea, but I thought that the whole idea for the show was that only Chuck could have the um the intersect because his 
he was he had the intelligence or the brain capacity or whatever to handle it. You know what I mean? Right, right. And they, and at least Shaw was someone who was on that level where, okay, he can have the intersect because he's got the brain capacity. He was a good opposite enemy for Chuck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then as soon as, well, they let on that his sister was going to get the uh, the intersect, but that never happened. Um, and, but as soon as uh, Morgan got it, it was like, well, I guess everybody can get. I guess, it. yeah. <laughs> I guess it's just a matter of putting on these glasses and yeah, getting I, the intersect. You well, know what I mean? What they were doing was they were trying to like do the whole intersect for everyone kind of thing, and that's where it got to be corrupted, and that's where yeah. it became corrupted. So, and then it turns out, you know, like it was also a compatibility thing. You know, your, their brain wasn't on the right thing, and also their their attempt to make the intersect better made it corrupted. Um, so, I, I just I feel, feel like, like that's what made that's what made the character of Chuck different. Um, yeah. Was that he was the one who could have it? He was the only one who could have it. Yeah. Like when it when it gets to the final episode, you find out oh anyone could have read that email. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. The series could have been called Morgan. Yeah. You know and what then I mean? they, yeah, and then they switched it like to the point where it was no longer <laughs> just about the intersect; it was more about like Chuck and Sarah. Yeah. And I feel like they kind of at the end of the. Uh, I feel like they could have done some other things instead of making Sarah lose her memory and then having having him win her back again. Yeah. Which is I, I don't think that's a I don't think that was I just feel like this last season was Although in the in the final episode when they did the montage of like old clips from the show. Oh yeah. Do you get did you get the feeling looking at it by saying, Oh my god, Zach Levy looks so different? Yeah, he looks like 10 years younger, even though the show is only like five years ago. It's just weird, yeah. He definitely looks much different. He definitely aged. Um, He looks more cleaned up. Yeah. (laughs) Because his hair was all mess. Yeah, Like back at the beginning, longer. He looks more more Hollywood-fied. Yeah, and now he looks all secret agent and stuff. Yeah. Um, But I feel like this last season was kind of a waste because there's a lot of things that they could have done with it, and they just kind of one thing they could have stuck with and instead they kind of threw like three or four different ideas together and made it into a 13 episode series uh, right and i feel like it just kind of um wasted itself so well getting away from from chuck a little bit um what other series finales have you enjoyed um i know it's a little bit polarizing let me just say planned plan a series finale because obviously there's a bunch of series that don't yes. expect to be ended and the last show was just like a normal show yeah yeah so um the one that's in most recent memory and probably the most polarizing for many people who actually watched the series or didn't watch the series um was lost um i i actually watched it once and when it ended i turned to uh my girlfriend and i said i don't get it <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I never was, watched the, I have no comment on that. I yeah. never watched it. I never got into it. Yeah. So it it was one of those they, that dead, right? Uh, no, okay. So there's a bit. There's a very huge uh, common misconception. Um, I I watched it once and I thought about it for days. It was one of those, and then I watched it again for uh, a second time, maybe like six months ago. And it, it, it solidified my idea. So what it was is they were not in purgatory when they were on the island. Everything that happened on the island happened for real. Okay. So what happened is they were so connected due to being on the island that in between the real life and the afterlife, which was heaven, because when he opened the doors at the end, a bright white light consumed them all, and then it ended. So the way that it occurred was it was real life on the island. Everything that occurred was real. But what happened is their souls, when each one of them died, it could have been, you know, Jack dies at the end of the series. So it could be that time. And then everybody else, like Hurley and Ben, don't die until many, many years later. Many years later, because Hurley becomes the island. He becomes, a, like, the person who... He becomes the island. Him. What's that? <laughs> He becomes the island. He becomes the island. No, he becomes the protector of the island, who is uh, immortal. Um, and then he, until he passes it on to someone, then he dies. Then he disappears and dies. 
Um, so that could have been, you know, 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. But when he dies, his soul goes into the middle plane. And then when they all meet, they're ready to purgatory? go. Purgatory? No, no, no. It's not purgatory. Uh, I, I, whenever I think of purgatory, I think of everybody lives in hell. But purgatory and hell are different. Or, or like in like so, purgatory is just stuck between this life and the afterlife. Is that what? Yeah. Okay. So they were. So once they die, they make it to purgatory. But on the actual show of Lost, they were not in purgatory. So in the last latter two seasons, five and six, when they were doing the flash sideways where they were all, like, in regular life, that was purgatory. But the island still occurred. It still took place. So I understand, like, a lot of people... I know it sounds a little... I know it sounds crazy, but, like, if you actually watch the whole series, it's better understood. Like, so every... So so the... the I was so sick of the flashing around with that show that I couldn't watch it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But it's just that, like, if you stuck with that whole series, it was a good ending. It, but some people took misunderstood that ending. Like they were like, "Oh, they were dead the entire time," but it's not true. That's not how the idea was. And then people were like, "Oh, you didn't answer all of our questions." But in the final season of uh, season six of the DVD, they showed like, you know, Ben and Curly <laughs> chilling out, like taking care of the island and stuff, and it was monotonous. It was bad. So they were like, they basically created that video to be like, look, this is why we didn't answer this question on the show because it was just, it was not worth it for you. And uh, they were right. I mean, it was cool to see, but it was not worth it for the show. Um, so that was, that was probably the one that I could think of in its, uh, the most recent that I could think of that was the most polarizing. Um, there's a lot of um, polarizing. I feel like most series finales end up being polarizing. I think they have um, yeah. People always point at the ending of Saint Elsewhere, which was a medical drama that was on in like the '80s. Okay. Denzel Washington was on it. Um, it's kind of where he got his big break from. Okay. But end, it ended up being the end of the show, last episode, at the very end. It was a autistic child looking into a globe with a hospital in it. Oh my god. I would have hated so, that. So, like, the whole thing basically occurred in this little boy's mind. Oh my god. Those, are, or those types of finales are the ones that I feel are enormous cop-outs. You feel so cheated. Yes. The there was a series um, called. This one was actually it was cleverly done, but it's still a cop out. There was a, a series called the Bob Newhart Show. Okay. Um, where he owned a. Uh, a, a Bob Newhart was on a, a variety of different television shows that were all named like Bob Newhart or the Newhart Show or the Bob Newhart Show. So I can't remember which one is which. <laughs> one of them, he owned a hotel in. Maine or Vermont or wherever and lived there with his wife um, and that ended and then there was another show called you know the Bob, Bob the Bob show or whatever where he was someone else in a totally different story and in that episode on the final finale of that episode he wakes up in the hotel from his previous series in his bed I, I remember hearing about that I remember hearing it's, about that it's clever yeah but yeah, it's yeah. a cop out <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of like if Chuck was completely a just a dream. a dream, and he woke up and he's like, "Wow, that would," and she had just walked in, like right, that would have been right. a huge cop out. Yeah, it's yeah. the reason I hated the movie Click. It oh, was Click so was stupid, but I mean, okay, the, the whole idea of the movie was stupid, but it was so obvious from the moment he was in the mattress store. And then he finds this remote control and fast forwards to his life. I immediately was like, he's asleep. Right. He's asleep. Right. That's a, yeah, those are huge cop outs. Um, there was another movie or another show that did that. I forget which one it was. But, um... but in there, on the other end of that, there are other ones that are the, the most widely viewed series finale ever. Do you know what it was? Um, was it? Was it? Twin Peaks? I don't know. I actually don't know. Twin Peaks? Yeah, I don't know. 
It was uh, it was mash. And that was a not not a lot of people like that one either, right? That was a uh, yeah, kind because of polarizing as well. I talked to my mom about it. She hates it because <laughs> the, the show ran for you know fifteen years or whatever it, it ran was for a long time, longer than the actual uh, war itself. And yeah, and it was a comedy about yeah. these people working in a mobile army, army surgical hospital. Mm-hmm. And then the final episode came, and they took away Hawkeye, who was Alan Alda. And they didn't take him away, but he was done with his army career. And when he got back to the United States, he had, he had gone crazy. And they put him in a mental institution. It's like, that's not funny. So it ended on a very... So they completely went 180. Yeah. A very somber moment. But I think that the fact that, that we're still talking about these... Obviously, we didn't watch any of these because we weren't around. Wait, or, yeah. You know, cognizant enough to, to realize what was going on but you know the fact that I can name them off means that the people who wrote them had sort of done their job because they'll never forget it Yeah, you know what I mean yeah. and I think it's, it also goes hand in hand with the popularity of the show obviously the one for Lost stick in people's minds because of lost. that show was because that show was so popular yeah you um, stupid no <laughs> no, just... no. Um, but another one that I do remember is the Sopranos finale. Mm-hmm. You never watched Sopranos, right? I did not, but I do know how it ended. Well, basically, it was filmed wrong. Um, okay. The 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 I read an article where the guy who the director, not the director, the uh, the writer for the show, um, was interviewed and said basically I wanted them to make it more obvious that the entire family had been killed sitting in this diner where right. the way that they filmed it, it was kind of vague because it faded to black mm-hmm. and then they played journey music. Right. Um, but apparently he, he wanted to film it in such a way that it was very obvious that there was a guy coming out of the bathroom and he was immediately going to kill Tony Soprano. Right. Because I mean, the show was told in his point of view, right? Mostly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was the main character. Yeah, so so a lot of people just didn't get it. Right. I remember sitting there, I, did, I only watched the first season and the last season. Um, the first season was really good. I didn't really have HBO, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, or I wasn't paying attention to it, and it didn't really entertain me all that much. Um, and then I started dating Steph, and her family watched it every week. Um, and her parents were like, what was that? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but I think that people like they they watch these shows and they they're ready for the end, and then the end comes and they're Completely disappointed. disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Because it didn't. It's ending and it's not coming back, and that's the memory you have of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, let me just let's just get out of the way. My my memory of the of that '70s show. And Alias are not the final episodes because I haven't seen them. Yeah, and then I think it was like it was only maybe last year that I finally told you how it ended. Yeah, and and it was like a two-hour season finale, series finale, yeah. and I told and you. I can like still watch. I have it on DVD. I can still watch it, but it's like I don't know. It just um, you think if I watch a show so religiously, I would be there for the season finale, but yeah, I got hooked on twenty-four that season. Yeah. So, Which, um, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, you know what it was? They were playing the alias episodes online. If you, they were absolutely. If you missed the episode, they would replay it for you online on the um, the next day ABC website the next yeah. day. Mm-hmm. So I would always watch it the next day, and then because I was always watching Twenty Four, and then for some reason the one day I just didn't watch it, and yeah. that was the season finale yeah. or series finale. So, you know, there was a lot of there was another J.J. Abrams project where there were a lot of questions to be answered at the final episode so yeah I, from what i could remember from what i can remember alias ended pretty much the only way it could end i believe they woke up on a lost island right exactly <laughs> they, they were in an airplane that crashed yeah uh no uh so sloan finally reached immortality and he was looking for immortality the entire the entire series 
Yeah. You know, with the Baldi artifacts and everything. He finally achieved it, despite the fact that he killed his daughter for it and everything. He finally yeah. did it. Um, but the the issue that occurred was uh, uh, Sydney's father, you know, pretty much trapped him in a, an area for his entire life. Um, he was trapped. He left him there. Well, actually, Jack didn't leave him there. He killed himself. So he didn't leave him there. He just pretty much got stuck there for the rest of his life. Um, and that's pretty much how it ended. And that's the only, I think that's the only way it could have ended. You know, Sydney yeah. could have gone to fight another day, you know, gotten married, gone to have kids or whatever. Um, that's fine. Um, but, uh, I, I, that's pretty much the only way that show could have ended. Um, but I mean, I'm trying to think of other, I mean, the Seinfeld series finale, the people more I, it's kind of dumb. Yeah. People think it's kind of dumb, but I mean, I get it. Yeah. I get it. The whole the whole point of the show is them being normal people, and awful normal people. Yeah, being a holes. Yeah, and, and, and came back and yeah, bit them in the ass. The whole idea was, look, if you're gonna be a holes, it's gonna come back to bite you, mm-hmm. and that's the whole point of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't think that it was that bad, and it ended actually in the same joke that the series started with. So that's you know kind of yeah. Brings it to it, brings the circle to a close. Yeah, it was, you know, I felt that it was a good ending. I mean, it was pretty much like they brought back all the characters that everybody loved throughout the years, and we're like, these people are right. terrible people. And at first, you're like, man, these people are pretty awful. But, but, but you're as, watching the show, and you're like, you know, oh, I'm like that. I'm like that. You know, I yeah. I say yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And then like, you know, you yeah. end up saying. You know, still today, the things that they say on that show, like shrinkage and you know, slow talker yeah. or whatever, regifting, and, yeah, yeah. And then they 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 turn it right back around on you and throw it in your face, and you're like, "Hey, you know the person you say you've been like for the past eight years? You're a jerk." Yeah, and they'll throw you in jail for you for it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So while we were talking about this, I actually uh, looked it up. Um. Uh. On AOL TV. Uh, they have a list, which is the 10 best series finales ever. Um, this was it, it rather like a little bit of an older list. Um, it's back in May of last year when Smallville ended, which I don't know if you ever watched Smallville, <laughs> John, but the I actually stopped watching Smallville after season six. It made it to about season 10. I decided to watch it just to see what the series finale would be like, and I... I did not waste four more years on the show, and I was pissed. Um, there was never a payoff. Um, you never saw this Clark Kent in this version don the Superman suit. Ever. Right. He had it, he picked it up, and then you saw a CG of him very, very far away with the suit on. And then you never saw him standing close up or anything. So there was no... Zero, absolutely zero payoff. So that was a really bad one. Um, that was a really, really bad one. Uh, uh, let me just say real quick, I'm going to just uh, add in. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Steph was telling me about it, but she thinks her favorite series finale of all time was um, another HBO show called Six Feet Under. Okay. Um, if you never watched it, it's a show about a family that owns a funeral home. Okay. And every episode started with someone dying. And then them being brought the body, and it goes to this person's whole life and like explaining you know how they got to where they were at when they died, and basically it's like a you know they're telling a life story every episode, mm-hmm. and the series ended with them following every one of the main characters, you know, kind of fast forward through their lives to their deaths. Oh, that is good. That is good. Yeah, to I, their, I, I, to I, I their think... eventual deaths, you know, whether be it immediate and sudden or you know they live a long life yeah. like i think the one main girl did yeah so that's a pretty cl- pretty good one yeah yeah there's a there's another here's a here's a couple other ones so uh there's a countdown of 10 we'll skip over a couple since we already went through them uh one of them is uh the wire which you just <laughs> the wire watching, yeah right? um that kind of went full circle and it was nice to see like mcnulty kind of uh stop being ridiculously drunk. <laughs> yeah, you know he. I feel like they they sort of showed everyone's character changing, or you know, they showed the 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 younger people taking the ranks of 
the yeah. people who had died throughout the series. Yeah. You know, they, they show the next Davon's going to be the next Stringer. Mm-hmm. Um, but they never show, obviously, you don't want someone being like Minogue, who was kind of a loose cannon. But they just kind of, sh- they didn't wrap up his story at all. You know what he, I mean? He, uh, they showed him standing on the, on the highway at the end. Right. So what you hope he did was he it's cleaned just, up. Right. Yeah. And moved on, you know, got back with the 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 doc lady and the doc cop and stuff like that. But uh, you don't ever know. I mean, he kind of he's always been the the kind of guy who you know he tries to fix himself and then he can't. You know, he the, throughout the whole five seasons he just kind of did that. Right. Um, and uh, let's see. Another one is uh, Arrested Development, which was basically a huge opening. For the movie that may should come out this year, right? Um, <laughs> ten years later, <laughs> or uh, actually, it's eight, eight years later, but very close. Um, the Mary Tyler Moore show. Apparently, that was. Uh, I mean, there's ones that were you know they're know. pretty, not as memorable, but good endings like Cheers. Yeah, there's um, yeah the next one is closed, Cheers. They closed down the bar. And that's right. basically it. And then Fraser moved to Seattle. <laughs> um, he moved years before that, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Um, another one is uh, the Actually, Shield. I'm looking at a list too, and Twin Peaks is on this one. Oh really? I don't. Um, I never watched the show, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it was one of those shows that kind of like never really ended itself. They did a two-hour movie. There was two seasons, and then David Lynch did a, did a movie. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if. You know, if that counts as to close the uh, the final episode. Yeah. Um, another one is uh, the Shield, which um, ended. They only it could it ended. In oh, the Shield, yeah. Only it could only end in two ways, which was either Vic Mackey died in a hell of gunfire, or he was left to his own vices for the rest of his life. Right. And it ended in the latter way, um, which is interesting of an ending people didn't really like it some people didn't like it some people did i think it was it was either the only two ways they could have finished it um and then this also lists like the new you know new heart which is actually the one the new heart okay yeah the show then 24 woke up is on Bob this new heart i think uh yeah yeah so and then there's 24 also, is on this one another list i'm looking at 24 pretty much ended to set yeah, up the I mean, movie that's going to come out this year or next year. So I didn't really think that it was much of an ending, more of like a to be continued. <laughs> right. Um, but they ended it when it, you know, on a, on a positive note because, you know, the two seasons before that were just awful. <laughs> right. Um, but, okay, so... I think that is. Uh, we will link to these lists that we were looking at in the show notes. So uh, oh. give it a check. Give it a check That's... later. What's that? I was kind of jumping around from lists, so I was oh. just kind of. Mentioning... All right, we'll just keep putting the lists. I think it'd be good. I mean, if you just Google yeah. best series finales, you know, there's hundreds of lists you can look through. Yeah, we could just Google worst series finales. That could work too. Right. Uh... <laughs> there it is. Saying elsewhere, I finally saw it. Um. All right, well, that is, uh, I think that will do it for this week. Uh, next week, we will be back. Maybe Amy will join us. And uh, so for this week, for Screen View Episode 16, I am Peter Van, and the lone other gunman guy is... <laughs> gunman? I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm the, I'm You're the, the lone other guy. Men. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> From that one, I'm just the other. It's Peter and the other guy. Yeah, Peter and the other guy. The lone gunman. <laughs> uh, all right. So we will see you guys uh, next week. All righty.